Hello Makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today we're going to talk about TiVo's Little Monster. Stick around. Welcome back makers. So a few weeks ago I unboxed and assembled the TiVo Little Monster during a live stream. Now the TiVo Little Monster uh, boasts a print volume of 340 millimeters in diameter by 500 millimeters in height and that is an absolutely enormous build area. It runs off a smoothie board clone board, it does have a clone E3D Titan extruder and also comes with with a BL touch. It can also print tethered via USB cable and also takes an SD card. The build wasn't actually too complicated. I think it took me about an hour or an hour and a half to put it together. The instructions were fairly clear and it wasn't that complicated. The only complicated wire was probably dealing with all the wires that had to be connected. However, these are clearly labeled. The only problem with that is that to organize those cables, it becomes a bit complicated. As you can see, I have not encased those wires in any form of cable management. The only reason for that is because I really don't want to take those labels off just in case a few of those wires decide to unplug themselves for some reason or by accident, I really wouldn't know how to plug them back in. Finding the Z offset for the BL touch is relatively simple. You do have to modify a line of code in the start code of every slicer. However, that's clearly explained in the instruction manual. The only downside that I found is that it's not, the BL touch is not always precise and tends to lose its level quite often. So I found myself constantly printing with a raft just to be safe. It does have a heated build plate and it takes direct AC current. So that's actually really good. It also comes with a very large size build tech sheet. However, what you tend to find is that when you're printing something that takes over 20, 30 hours and uses a lot of filament, you kind of want to make sure that it's going to stick. So I found myself using Magic Goo anyway, just to make sure that the prints will stick properly. Now, having dealt with all those specific, it's time to get the prints. And as you can see, I've printed quite a few big things and a few tiny things because I wanted to see how it copes. So first off, this is the 3D Benchy that I printed during the live stream. Now this was printed at 200 microns and 100 millimeters a second. So honestly speaking for 100 millimeters a second, that is really not bad at all. There is one thing which you will notice consistently throughout the prints. And that is the salmon skin effect. And I will talk about that a bit later. After I did that little benchy, I had a bit of filamentum vertigo gray. So I decided to print a bigger benchy and the results were actually quite impressive. The fact that everything prints beautifully at hundred millimeters a second, especially at obviously 200 microns, is quite impressive. And while the prints are not flawless or perfect, I really, really, really like the way they turn out. Following that, as you probably saw, I printed this Darth Vader right here. This took just around 24 hours to print in three different parts and it came out absolutely awesome. There is a bit of ghosting on the prints and that's probably due to the speed that it was printing at. And also once again, the salmon skin effect. And as you can, you will see, that is a constant issue with this printer. Now my buddy Ben from Hawk 3D Proto in the UK has been selling the Protopasta HTPLA V3 High 5 Blue, uh, which was released by Joel Telling, the 3D printing nerd. And I asked him if he has any, and unfortunately they were all sold out. However, he very kindly sent me a spool that he was using. And in this spool, there was enough for me to do this print right here. Actually, I had about four meters left and I also printed a small 3D Benchy on the new Anet. The print actually turned out absolutely beautiful. Unfortunately, halfway up the print, there is some color inconsistencies. Now this could be due to two possible reasons that I can think of. One of them is possibly the spool that I had had a bit of layer of color inconsistency. The other option, which is possibly more likely known protopasta is that I had some temperature fluctuations during print. However, 
it did stop halfway through in terms of um, color changing and the rest printed absolutely beautifully. The finish is actually gorgeous. Once again, you will see that bit of salmon skin effect. However, it actually gives it a bit of texture and it quite suits this print. I think it turned out absolutely gorgeous. Next, I decided to throw in some Azure Film PETG. Now, Azure Film produces really cheap PETG. It's actually weird because it prints at around 210 degrees, which that is usually PLA temperatures. However, I was sent a few spools to try out and I have to say I was extremely impressed. It prints really beautifully, very clear. If you up the temperature by just five degrees to 215 degrees, and this is the result. This was printed with two perimeters, so it's not in vase mode. This took, I think, about 12 hours to print. It has that salmon skin effect, but once again, this actually came out quite beautiful if it wasn't for that salmon skin effect. Personally, to me, I don't mind it at all. I think it, I, I think it gives it a bit of texture on this particular model. So uh, honestly speaking, I'm actually very happy with this. Having noticed that these, the salmon skin effect keeps popping up, I thought, okay, let me print something in wood because it might actually give it the, the feel of a grain of wood. So I printed this vase by Devin from Make Anything. Now this was printed in Azure Film Wood PLA and it was printed in vase mode, so it's one perimeter. And once again, it printed beautifully. To be completely honest, I saw less of a salmon skin effect on this than any other print. So I probably need to print something more smooth in order for that salmon skin effect to really come out on wood prints. But other than that, this printed out absolutely gorgeously. Now, seeing this salmon skin effect, kind of kind of showed me exactly what could possibly be wrong with this printer or rather what is the downside of having such a large delta printer and the salmon skin effect is one of them that is visible on pretty much any delta printer however when you have such a big 3D printer which is in delta format. You have long arms and large printing area. That resonance, that salmon skin effect is simply amplified even more because of the range of motion and even one step will have very large movement on the print. I thought to myself, okay, can it print in 100 microns then? Maybe if I slow it down a little bit and print 100 microns, what, how, what's the result? This is the result. This was printed with Matte Forge Matte PLA. It was printed at 100 microns and it was printed at 60 millimeters a second without any supports. I spent almost the entire day looking at this print because it is absolutely beautiful. It's scaled to about 150% from its original size. The details are impeccable and I absolutely love this print. There is a bit of ghosting. You can still see the salmon skin effect, especially on the coat of the pirate. However, I have to say that I am truly truly impressed with the quality of this print. Then just to replicate it and sort of push the printer a bit further, I decided to print this dragon here. Now this was also printed at 100 microns, but this was amped up to 70 millimeters a second, also in matte forge matte PLA. And once again, it can handle itself. I, I have to admit, I didn't go over the 100 millimeters a second simply because I feel that that would be a ridiculous speed to push a printer at least in my case, I don't really need to. 100 millimeters a second is, I think, one of those speeds where that's where you will get a decent enough quality. So um, anything more than that, and I think that the prints won't turn out that great. At least I think. I'm not sure. So honestly speaking, I, I truly couldn't be happier with the result at that height and that speed. So what do I think of the TiVo Little Monster? Now, this was sent to me by Gearbest after I actually requested it. This was the only printer I ever requested from Gearbest because I was really, really looking forward to review it. And I have to say that personally for me with this unit, I am really not disappointed. Actually far from it, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. And for around 700 euros, 
I think it's well worth it for the print volume that you get. Now granted, the quality will not be the best purely because it is a Delta. And maybe if you upgrade the board to a Duet Wi-Fi, for example, or upgrade the stepper motors and the drivers, you will most likely reduce that salmon skin effect. However, honestly speaking for me, I think for my needs, this works as it is. Now, it might not be for everyone. The price might be steep for some, but the volume you're getting for that price is actually quite huge. The printer is actually quite solid. It's, it turned out to be a very reliable printer. It's one, it's one of those printers where I know I have no problem letting it handle a 20 plus hour print because I honestly know it's going to finish it. I, I have to admit that the only time I almost had a failed print was because that when I loaded in filament, because this has an automatic load and unload filament function, what happens is it moves downwards and pulls the filament with it. And once it extrudes a certain length of filament, it goes back up. And what happened is the filament on top of the spool fell off and was about to snag on the spool holder. But thankfully I got that in time. So if you're getting this printer, it's something to watch out for. What I don't like about this printer, to be completely honest, there isn't much that I personally don't like about this printer. Now, I am talking about my experience with this machine right here. I know every machine is different. I know some people who've had issues with this machine and parts. So unfortunately, I cannot speak for them. I can only speak from my experience. And as always, the prints speak for themselves. The proof is in the pudding and that's what I can vouch for. Something else I need to mention is that something has been brought up and that is TiVo customer support. I have not had the need to contact TiVo support just yet. So I also cannot verify whether or not that is true. Um, I, I honestly don't know. So I cannot say. Once again, all I can talk about is my experience with this printer. Disclaimer as always, this machine was sent to me by Gearbus to do a non-biased review. No money has exchanged hands and no one has forced me to say or do anything that I possibly really didn't want to do or say. Everything I talked about today was based on my experience with this machine right here. If you want more information, I am going to leave the affiliate link for Gearbus and a non-affiliate link for TiVo down in the video descriptions. There will be discount codes as well for those who are interested in purchasing it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, and as always, happy making guys.